So Lead Us for Kingdom Building, we started off as the Liberian Christian Youth Ministry years ago in 2009, you know, we'll meet and pray. You know, God said, you know, just, just call some of the young people you know and you just pray together. So I said, okay, I will call them and pray. Then God said, why don't you call them every month and you'll pray? I was like, okay, I'll call them every month and we'll pray. And he said, okay, you call, you'll pray every Saturday. Amen. Yeah. So from 2010 to now, we've been meeting on the line every Saturday. I don't know how many Saturdays is that. But for young people to just gather every Saturday and come to hear the word of God and share the word of God. It is something, it's something, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. Sometimes we don't, we have to see the positive in the youth. Amen? Amen. Because the more we focus on the positive, it starts to enlarge. Amen? Amen? So we'll come and we'll pray. And these young people, they're on the line at 12 midnight, praying. 12 a.m. to 12.30, they're on the line, 30 minutes of prayer. They're praying. And if you call me, you say you're praying, you call me, you say, can you pray for me? I say, no, there's nobody else to pray. It's on you. Once you sign up for it, yeah, because so, you know, sometimes a few minutes before they'll be like, you know, they're afraid, like, oh no, you know, I don't think I can do it. I say, I can't do it either. <laughs> So this was that word of God and you do it, amen. But we have come fire and we started to host conferences. We host an all night uh, prayer. That's the first place that God led us to do a do an all night prayer. First one of my brother, I said, you call, he said, let's do a 24 hours prayer. I said, <laughs> I don't know about this one, you know, I'm still new to this, you know. So we said, okay, we'll do an all night. It was in Philadelphia. So we did an all night prayer. We prayed and God was just revealing and speaking to the young people that were there that night. All of the youth you see here today from LCD, I don't think any of them were there, you know. Uh, but we prayed that night and we left. And after that, we had to have, we had the first conference for LKB and we started to each year have the conference Go to different churches. Uh, our goal is to empower, equip young people to do the work of God, to let them know that it's okay to serve God. There's nothing wrong with you when you serve God. Amen? Amen. There is nothing wrong with you, young people, when you serve the Lord. Amen. You are different. You are different. You stand out. Resurrection. 
and that we may behold the glory of you in your holy sanctuary. Lord, that we will be transformed from within, not from the surface. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. We thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Without wasting any time, turning to the scripture, Philippians chapter 3, verses 10. And Paul said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, And I read the scripture, and I'm going to ask us a question, because I believe there is many Paul in our midst that tell God that I may know you, that God, that I may experience the power of your resurrection. But I want to ask you the question, how many of us here today, being a youth like the pastor said, it is not about your age. But how many of us are here today that are willing to know God and experience the power of God? Let me see your hands. So we have a couple of people that are willing to know God and the power of his resurrection. Now I'm going to ask you another question. How many of you are willing to die to receive that power? Be honest within yourself. How many of you, when they put you before the altar and the enemy come and say to receive this power of resurrection, you either die for it or you take a bill for it? How many of us will say, I'll take the dying part? To be honest, I'll probably tell God I need a second chance. Let me reprocess what the person is telling me. You see, it is more easy for us to say that I may know you than for me to actually get to know him. It is easier to be a friend to a person without building a connection with them. So Paul said that I may know you, not that Paul did not know Christ. Not that Paul did not know God. But the type of knowing that Paul was talking about, it is deeper than what we are thinking about today. Maybe some of us are thinking the kind of knowing that Paul is talking about is to know the name of Jesus. That he conquered the grave, he defeated the enemy, he raised the dead, he healed the sick. So that's the kind of God that Paul is talking about. But Paul is talking more deeper. Lord, that I may know you in other words, that you will live through me Amen. as your vessel. That's how I get to know my God. When God began to manifest himself through me, and God began to manifest his glory through me, then I really know my God. my God. Going to church does not mean that you know God. You can be on the altar of God, and you can be in the presence and be in the instrument department that doesn't necessarily mean that you know God what qualifies you of knowing God is your connection you have built with God that qualify you of knowing your God and the Bible said in the book of Daniel he said that they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit it so when a Christian come to ask God Lord I want to know you in other words, you are saying, Lord, crucify me to desire you. Many of us want to know God, but we are not willing to pay the price. And so my title is, can you pay the price? Can you pay the price to know Jesus? Can you pay the price to follow him? Can you pay the price to serve him? He said, Lord, I am too young. Well, the last time I checked, I was 28. He said, Lord, I am too old. The last time I checked that Abraham was an old man. 
and yet the Lord called him. The last time I checked that Moses was in his 80 when the Lord sent him back to Egypt. That I may know you require me dying to myself. I want to encourage you for the time that I have. What made Jesus very successful in his ministry and demonstrating the power of God is because Jesus had a connection with God. Many of us, we only know God on a superficial level. And it's not deep. So we only know God based on what someone told me. But I need to ask you, do you know God for yourself? And that's what Paul was saying to God. I want to know you for myself. I want to experience the power of resurrection for myself. I thank God for the testimony of others. But when I get to experience God and God begins to live inside of me, then I know my God. So Jesus was human, just like us. But yet the Bible said, he was said to his disciples, I do nothing unless what the Father has told me. And that taught me that Jesus died to himself. Jesus died to self-interest. Many of us, we can know God because we are too full of ourselves. You may have the voice, but the power of God is not behind the voice because you are too full of yourself. You may have the gift and the talent and the spirit of God does not accompany the gift and the talent because you are too proud and arrogant. And only people that are willing to die to self can know God. Amen. Amen.
And that's what it's about. And that's what we're about. Amen. 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 Thank you for success city. They are here, they have strength. They believe they will do some things in this church and they will continue to do what they've been doing and even more. Amen. But you guys are like families now, so please feel free if you have to reach out to us anytime. We're here to support you guys. Amen. And in whatever way we can. Yes. So please keep that. Let's stay in touch. Amen. 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 And we bless God for them.